Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of Pesonicide A. This work was published in JAX by Bo Xu, Chang Lu and Mingji Dai in their paper 13-step total synthesis of Pesonicide A. This compound was first isolated in 2019 by Kubanek et al from the red algae Pesonelia. It represents a new class of diterpene glycosides with a unique tetracyclic framework. Preliminary investigations into its biological effects shows activity against MRSA and liver stage Plasmodium burgae infections, but no cytotoxicity against human keratinocytes. The structure of the compound is very interesting as it has an unprecedented tetracyclic 5636 carbon skeleton with seven stereocenters included in this tetracyclic framework in addition to those found on the sugar moiety, which is attached via a beta-glycosidic linkage. To install this beta linkage, they would use an anchimeric-assisted glycosylation, while the difficult-to-access cyclopropane ring, which is found at the centre of the framework, could be constructed using a dearomative cyclization, in addition to a radical hydrogen atom transfer cyclization. So let's start the synthesis. The first step of the synthesis was an asymmetric conjugate addition, this reaction used a chiral N heterocyclic carbene ligand, which is first protonated by isopropyl magnesium bromide and then chelates another equivalent of this Grignard reagent. It has been proposed that copper 2 triflate is reduced by the Grignard, forming copper 1 bromide that can then coordinate to the NHC ligand and become alkylated, forming an isopropyl ligated organocuprate reagent. It is this reagent that undergoes a conjugate addition to the enone, preferentially attacking at the beta position, as organocuprates are soft nucleophiles. This forms a magnesium stabilized enolate, which is then alkylated by 1 bromo 2 butyne, forming the product, with the catalyst being regenerated by further reaction with the Grignard. This formed the product in a 61% yield with a greater than 81% EE. This compound was taken forward to a hydroarylation reaction. The carbonyl first coordinates to the palladium catalyst, formed by the reaction of palladium acetate and tricyclohexyl phosphine. Potassium acetate reacts with the boronic acid, forming a negatively charged borate, which undergoes oxidative addition with the palladium complex. A syn addition to the alkyne then occurs, placing the aryl ring and the palladium on the same side of the double bond. Hydrolysis of the carbon palladium bond completed the formation of the product in a 58% yield. The newly formed double bond was reduced in the next step using an iridium catalyzed enantioselective hydrogenation with a chiral phosphonite oxazoline ligand, forming the compound in a greater than 99% EE. The alpha position of the ketone was then deprotonated with KHMDS and the compound was triflated in a 96% yield using bis trifl aniline. In the next step, the ether was demethylated using boron tribromide. This first coordinates to the oxygen and then reacts with another equivalent of boron tribromide, forming boron tetrabromide, which is more nucleophilic and able to attack the methyl group, eliminating the phenolate, which is protonated upon workup. The newly revealed phenol was required for the de of cyclization. In this reaction, it is deprotonated by potassium carbonate, and the palladium complex then undergoes oxidative insertion into the triflate bond. This is then attacked by the carbon paired to the phenolate on the aromatic ring, and a reductive elimination of this complex forms the desired quaternary centre in a 96% yield. The quinone formed by this reaction took part in the next step, which was a hydrogen atom transfer cyclization. In this reaction, isopropoxy phenylsilane and an iron ACAC complex react with the more electron rich double bond, transferring a hydride and generating a radical on the tertiary center. This radical can then undergo a Gizeh addition to the quinone, forming the desired cyclopropane ring, together with the generation of a radical on the alpha position that then reacts with another equivalent of isopropoxy phenylsilane to complete the reaction in a 65% yield. The remaining enone was then hydrogenated with palladium and carbon and hydrogen gas in a 99% yield. Taking this compound forward, the researchers then carried out a Wittig reaction with the Lebel modification. In this reaction, TMS diazomethane first reacts with Wilkinson's catalyst, forming a rhodium-stabilized diazonium salt. The carbon is then protonated by isopropyl alcohol and the addition of triphenylphosphine regenerates Wilkinson's catalyst 
allowing for the elimination of nitrogen gas and the formation of methylene triphenylphosphorane. It is this phosphorane that undergoes the Wittig reaction, where the carbon attacks the carbonyl centre, while the oxygen attacks the phosphorus, forming an oxophosphatane ring that then decomposes to form the alkene in an 89% yield. This alkene then took part in a Mokoyama hydration. In this reaction, an iron tris acac complex first reacts with phenylsilane, generating an iron hydride complex. This iron hydride transfers a hydrogen radical to the double bond in a Markovnikov fashion, forming a tertiary carbon radical. This radical then added to methyl 4 nitrobenzene sulfonate, forming the desired carbon oxygen bond. This intermediate is reduced by the iron 2 species generated from the hydride addition, and the resulting organonitrite can then be hydrolyzed to produce pesonosol in a 65% yield. With pesonosol now complete, they then turned their attention to the synthesis of the carbohydrate moiety of the molecule. This started with the glycosylation of the compound using a glucose trichloroacetimidate donor that had an acetate protecting group at the 2 position and benzyl ethers at the 3, 4 and 6 position. The trichloroacetimidate was activated by silver triflate, which coordinates to the nitrogen, promoting the elimination of trichloroacetamide and the formation of an oxocarbenium intermediate. The glycosylation of this oxocarbenium can be directed by anchomeric assistance, also known as neighbouring group participation. This occurs when the oxygen of the acetate group present at the 2 position attacks the 1 position, forming a 5-membered ring. As the 2 position of glucose has an equatorial configuration, the formation of this 5-membered ring blocks the bottom face of the molecule, directing the glycosylic scepter to preferentially add to the top face of the molecule, forming the beta glycosylic linkage in an 86% yield. Having served its purpose to direct the stereochemistry of the glycosylation, this acetate was then hydrolyzed using potassium hydroxide and methanol. These conditions selectively reveal the hydroxyl group at the 2 position, as esters and benzyl ethers are orthogonal protecting groups. This means that they can be selectively deprotected in the presence of one another and allows control over the regioselectivity of a synthesis. This concept is very important in carbohydrate chemistry, and many of the reactions carried out in the synthesis of carbohydrate based targets are protecting group manipulations carefully orchestrated to allow for the sequential and precise manipulation of different hydroxyl groups present within the sugar. With the hydroxyl group at the 2 position now selectively revealed, it was sulfated using sulfur trioxide and pyridine, and in the next step, the benzyl ethers were removed using Perlman's catalyst and hydrogen gas to complete the synthesis of pesanoside A. Well that's it for this synthesis. Join me in the next video where we will look at the synthesis of ribostomycin.